see you here. You? See you again. Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We are opening um, this hearing. We want to welcome everyone to land <coughs> My name is Melinda Katz. I am the Beep. If you wish to testify on any items, please fill in the speaker request forms, the calendar number for the item you wish to speak about, whether you are for or against the project, and if you are speaking as a representative or a member of a group. The applicant will be called to give a description of the zoning action requested, and the floor will then be open for public speakers. Each speaker will have three minutes, um, unless we have more to talk about. So welcome, let's open. Okay, calendar item number one, BSA number 36482BZ, yeah. the applicant Trotman Sanders LLP, affected community board member 11. Um, good morning, uh, Madam Member President, uh, members of the community board, our present staff. My name is uh, Jeremiah Kandriva. I represent um, Valley's Total Fitness of New York. Valley operated this um, physical culture establishment at 245-24 Horace Harding Expressway for a number of years. Uh, after Valley uh, divested its um, interest in these operations through bankruptcy and reorganization, they sold this location as well as many others to uh, a company called 24 Hour Fitness. 24 Hour Fitness um, is now operating at this location. We uh, have an application before the Board of Stands and Appeals, and we are requesting um, two actions before the Board. The first action is for additional time to obtain a certificate of occupancy. The reason being is e each time the, the conditions of the Board are updated, the Board <coughs> requires that the certificate of occupancy be updated as well to reflect those conditions. And the second action that we are uh, requesting on the Board is to acknowledge the change of ownership. Um, that, that would conclude my testimony. I'm happy to take any questions with respect to this. So my understanding, the only difference is the change of ownership. That's right. And it, it, we, there are accessory business signs that reflect the change of ownership. That's it. There are no physical changes to the, to the um, facility itself. It operates the same in the same manner and in the same hours. Same hours. Same hours. Because That's the name correct. is deceiving. I know it is. It's actually it's very interesting because everyone asks the question and and so and, and, and rightly so. Asked, yeah. yeah. Sure. So 24 hours is just same hours as before. Correct. Same hours as. Same uh, uh, maximum amount of people, or everything like that. Correct. None of that has changed. Any yeah. Are they changing the equipment? No. To my knowledge, they're not changing the equipment as of now. They may at some point, you know, renovate or do the normal course additional uh, uh, equipment updates, but no, nothing is planned at this point that I'm aware. And the services remain the same. The services do remain the same. Correct. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other testimony? All right, that application is closed. Next item, calendar item number two, PSA number 6791BZ, the applicant Eric Palatnik, PC, Vector Community Board number 11. Good morning, Eric. Hello. Hello. Good morning, Madam Board President. as well. Um, thank you for taking the time to join us here. Two applications that I have for you, which, uh, one after the other. Uh, I think you'll be much more pleased with the first one than with the second one. It looks that way. Right. 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 Uh, this application that we're speaking about right now is a 26001 Horace Harding Expressway, which is also known as 54 55 in the Willamette Parkway. It is exactly on the Queens and Nassau border. Uh, it's a gas station that right now has a, a gulf. Uh, branding on it, and the gas station has been there since the 40s. It's, uh, it's been there for quite some time. It's located in the C12 district. Uh, it's a C12 over with an R4 overlay. Uh, the gas station is surrounded on one side by a nursing home, uh, and on the other side by a church and a temple Torah. So it's uh, surrounded by no houses. What we are proposing to do is to demolish the existing gas station that's on the site right now. As you can see, it's the picture that's in front of you. Um, the building has been there since the 40s. And it's quite outdated and it has an air base. Uh, the operator is Bola Enterprises. And Bola Enterprises is well regarded around the city and 
that's why we saw them. We're develop, redeveloping gas stations and, and putting a nice touch to them, including convenience stores. And what they're proposing to do here is to demolish the existing building uh, and rebuild the automotive service station in the corner there. Uh, it'll be an 1,800 square foot automotive service station, which would have six fuel pumps out front. And instead of repairs inside, you have a convenience store, which as I'm sure you're very well aware of is the trend with the automotive service stations these days. Uh, the operator, Cola Enterprise, as I mentioned again, uh, is quite meticulous. You'll be pleased to learn with the care and maintenance of their facilities. Uh, they spend a lot of money on facade materials, putting such things as marble and the tile work on the exterior of the structure. Uh, they have meticulous landscaping around the structure that's well maintained throughout the year. They includes all kinds of flowers and blooming plants. Uh, and they do a very nice job of keeping the parking lot well paved and maintained and striped. Uh, that's the signature of their operations. We appeared before Community Board 11. Uh, some of the people on the Community Board were familiar with Bola Enterprises and some of their stations around the city. And they were happy with the proposed design as well as the proposal. Right now, you don't you have a snack shop, right? It's a tiny little uh, area where you can walk in and get something. So, what's going to be the size? The size of the, of the new building is going to be 1,800 square feet. Right now, the existing structure is 2,500 square feet. The size of the new one is 1,800 feet small. Why? Why is it going to be small? They, they, they're building it to accommodate a, a convenience store component, whereas the original structure is built to accommodate auto repairs. So. We don't need uh, the same amount of space. It, it lays out nicely in that corner over there. Uh, part of the design feature, so you, you can be aware of it, is it's, you can see from the layout, a little net parkway curves at that point. And by placing the store, uh, the structure where it's located, it catches uh, the driver's eye. Most, don't worry a little bit of gas station information. Uh, most gas station and convenience store purchases are impulse purchases. So unless the driver actually clearly sees the, the location, and, sees this parking lot, they won't stop the drive to the next one. So that's what's driving the, or pushing the design. <coughs> Forgive me for not knowing this also a little bit of you know, gas station store trivia, but the um, it's run by Gulf then? No, it's going to be it's going to be branded by Shell when it's done. It's by Gulf Shell. Station now. Or it's run by the same organization that runs the gas station. Not now, no. Everything is changing. Everything is changing. The owner of the property sold the property to our client. The owner of the property right now that operates as a Gulf will be leaving the property. Our client, Cola, will be operating the property, and they'll be that company will be rebranding it from a Gulf station to a Shell station. And the Shell station runs both Gulf facilities. The Shell is just Shell is just the so. Shell is just what they call the flag flying over it. It will be operated by Bola. By Bola, okay. That's which is a local. Uh, alcohol beer. being sold? They'll be not hard alcohol, but they will be beer and wine course. There's no, there's no medical marijuana dispensary. Well, that's a good thing. We're good. I'm glad that. There's a few that just opened in the state today. Yes. All right. I think we're good. Any other questions? Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody here to testify on this? Okay, so apparently the community board made a request that the handicapped space, the way where it's located on the site, be moved? Yeah, so we were happy to accommodate that request. The architect will be revising. So it'll be revised and we'll make it as a condition? Yes, yeah, so we're happy to approve it. So great. Okay, any other testimony on this? Otherwise, this item is closed. Calendar item number three, campaign number 22710 BB, the applicant. Hello, Eric, Eric Palatnik. I'll, I'll go right to the punchline with this application. Uh, nobody is happy with what's going on at this station, including my clients who I'm representing here today, British Petroleum. Uh, this site is owned by British Petroleum. It's a gas station that's been under the jurisdiction of the Board of Standards and Appeals uh, since as early as 1955. The property is located in the CT2 zoning district. Uh, it's an overlay over an R32 zone district. It's located obviously on Northern Boulevard, uh, just a little bit west of the Clearview Expressway, adjacent to a commercial building to its left, and a, a, a development site to its right, commercial as well, and uh, in the rear uh, there's residential. We are here today because British Petroleum, I'll give you a little bit of history, 
British Petroleum purchased the site about two and a half years ago. It was previously owned by Getty. Getty went bankrupt. Getty had, a, if you may remember, the Getty stations, which there are no more of them around the city. They were notorious for being the, the, the least maintained and most poor condition stations around the city, which partly led to their bankruptcy. Uh, they were not maintained well. The sites, and this site in particular, which was a Getty, was not maintained well. It also, so it has a history. The community board, and I'm sure Ben Dingo can, can fill you in on, on this site more uh, uh, in its trials and tribulations through the years. Uh, British Petroleum purchased the site approximately two years ago. They inherited the existing operator. That's the, the person that's in the site right now operating it with auto repairs. The site is uh, a true gas station in the sense that it has three auto repair bays. It's got a small accessory convenience store to buy soda and things like that. It's got the gas pumps out front. We're not proposing to change the, the, the repair bays like the earlier application. There'll be no convenience store added. All British Petroleum is here to do is since they purchased it, they would like to put a canopy up over the pump islands. They'd like to modernize the pump islands. They'd like to remove more of the underground storage tanks, which are old and outdated, and put in new underground storage tanks for the, for the fuel. And they've already changed the signage on the property to reflect British Petroleum. But because it's a PSA approval, we weren't allowed to do that. And they did that unlawfully without the proper approval from the Board of Standard Appeals, changing the signage without the PSA approval. Uh, they did that because they took control of the site and take some time to get through the process. But they haven't done the other work, which is the, the pump roof, the tank replacement, or the installation of the canopy. Uh, we're here today to ask permission to make these changes, to legalize the signs, which are British Petroleum signs now, instead of Getty, to allow for the installation of a, an overhang, uh, a, a canopy over the pumps, so you don't get wet when you pump gas, and to allow them to, to rip out the existing tanks and put in new tanks. When they inherited the site, they purchased the site a few years ago from Getty out of bankruptcy. They took with it the operator. The operator of the site uh, does not work for British Petroleum, nor does he work for Getty. He operates under a lease agreement with the owner of the property. Uh, British Petroleum is now trying to terminate that lease agreement. They've been actively engaged in internal actions, uh, notifying the operator that he has a certain amount of time now to vacate the premises. I don't know the exact time frame, but if he does not vacate, they are going to bring, bring you into state Supreme Court to force him to vacate the premises. And the reason is that he's not operating, never never mind what the, the concerns of the community board are, which are rightfully placed here, that the site is kept powerfully. Uh, there are junk cars kept on the property. I have to be a car aficionado, as far as I've seen it, sort of the car shows I've run into that. Uh, but and these cars that he's got there are not collectible kinds of cars. They're just junk cars. So, uh, he has them littered all over the property. He's got tow trucks on the property. And he's got cars awaiting service that are to be maintained a much better scenario. So we're hoping that we'll have the tenant out of the site uh, in the next few months, and we can at that point bring the site into a, a pleasant operating Who's scenario. The tenant? I don't know his name. I don't, I'm not privy to his name. Uh, but he's, uh, like I said, they are trying right now to make aggressive efforts to cease his operations in the premises. But I'm unclear. So BP owns it and they rent it. BP owns it, and they have an operator agreement. That's what a lot of these. When does the operating do. agreement end? It doesn't. I'm not, I'm not privy to it, but it doesn't end right away. And they're trying to force it to end right now due to the violation of the, of the operator's contractual terms of the British Petroleum. Well, I assume the maintenance of the property is not up to their specs either. Right. How long does BP own it? About two years. And they inherited the lease. They inherited the lease, correct. And you don't know when the lease is up. I can find out that information report back. I, mean, I think that's kind of important, right? When is the lease up? I mean, what have they done in the last two years to get the tenants out for violation of contract? Well, they've given, uh, we can provide a history to you. They've given numerous warnings pursuant to the lease agreement. There's a cure phase, which uh, the tenant is, uh, is, gets the benefit of. They've given all of the warnings. The tenant is not accommodated with the cure phase. And they're now at the point where they have the legal right to take action. But the applicant is BP Gasoline. British Petroleum, they are on the site. Correct. So I know I'm a support country lawyer. Right. But um, no, you're not. if BP Gasoline is making the application, I assume there has to be some sort of approval or that it's okay pursuant to the lease that they now hold. No, what's okay? That they're, they're changing this property that they leased to this tenant. That 
You don't see, see know who that is, right? So I don't have his name, but he is not. Right. He doesn't have any rights to the improvement of the property. He doesn't have any right to say, to even though I have a lease on this for ten years, this is how I want to lease the property, and this no, is what I. Expect. No, it is very specific requirements that he adopted when he signed into the agreement with them as to how the site must be operated, who has control over who has control over the structure as far as its maintenance, uh, who has control over the site operations, and it all falls in the hands of Bruce Petroleum. They keep a very tight noose around his neck as far as what he can and cannot do on the property. He's violated virtually every requirement but they have. But they have a right to go on and make all these changes and amend the property basically and renovate the property. They don't have a right to go in and take out abandoned cars and up the property no, because that's his tenants. property. He has the right to repair cars. He has the right to repair cars. We don't have the right. Right now, we have the right to evict him. We don't have the right to actually physically go and remove his property. We have the right to remove him. But so long as he's operating under his current lease, he has the legal right to stay there. We're not pleased about it at all. I cannot I, I give you a communication if you'd like from British Petroleum for supporting this. Uh, to show you the discontent with it as well. It's not the image that they're seeking to portray. Uh, and they're not, they're not happy with it. At all. It just seems odd to me as a lawyer, right, that they have a right to go on, VP has a right to go on, renovate, dig up the ground, do all these things that, that the tenant may or may not want, but they can't manage to go on the property and clean it. No, because they have the right, are there, I, I can see you, it's a little murky. They have the right to control the structure. They have the right to control the infrastructure. But they're interrupting the business. They're right. interrupting the business, but there are clauses within the lease that so long as they deem that the, the improvements they're making are for the benefit of the operation of the business, that they're entitled to make that. Uh, the lease is also written, as are most leases, 